Ghali and your esteemed delegation on your very significant visit to South Africa. We're very delighted that you could be here after we issued or extended an invitation to you some time ago. We enjoy fraternal bilateral relations with yourselves anchored not only on our shared history, a history of struggle, of being together in the trenches, but also on our common vision for the self-determination of the people of Western Sahara. We proudly recall that we signed a memorandum of understanding on diplomatic consultations in 2013. Since then, we've had regular strategic exchanges whenever we have had occasion to meet in various forums at the African Union, in SADC, as well as at the United Nations focusing on issues of mutual interest at regional, continental, <clears throat> and international levels. Our strategic relationship has ensured that we've been able to cooperate at the African Union on major continental issues, including upholding the constitutive act of the African Union. Your visit to South Africa, Mr. President, is in many ways a reunion of comrades who share common views and common interests and who together seek to struggle for freedom, self-determination, and territorial integrity. South Africa stands by the principled position of the right to self-determination for the Sahrawi people, as enshrined in the Charter of the United Nations, as well as the Constitutive Act of the African Union. We firmly believe that any misinterpretation of the right of freedom and human dignity constitutes a grave betrayal of our own struggle for freedom and our commitment to the United Nations Charter and to the African Union Constitutive Act. We remain concerned about the prolonged suffering of the Sahrawi people as the African Union works to attain the aspiration for a peaceful, secure, integrated, and prosperous Africa, we are reminded that the decolonization of Africa is incomplete. In fact, as a people who struggled for freedom, we do believe that our own freedom is not complete until the people of Western Sahara attain their own freedom and self-determination. The decolonization of Western Sahara is essential to the achievement of the Africa that we want. We need to intensify international pressure so that the long-delayed referendum on the self-determination of the people of Western Sahara is finally held. In this regard, we reiterate our call for both parties to resume direct negotiations in good faith and without preconditions to achieve a mutually acceptable political solution which will provide for the self-determination of the people of Western Sahara. 
We call for an end to human rights abuses against the Sahrawi people and for the extension of the mandate of the United Nations mission for the referendum in Western Sahara, MINURSO, to include the monitoring of human rights. I'm certain that our engagement today will contribute to a strengthening of the existing bilateral relationship and practical actions of solidarity between our two nations. Our two nations will continue to exchange views on how to intensify the diplomatic pressure in our efforts to achieve the speedy resolution of the question of Western Sahara. Your Excellency, I once again welcome you and your delegation to South Africa, your home away from home. So we thank you for being here. Thank you.